What a mighty God we serve. And just knowing that is enough for us to praise him and to worship him just for being God, not even to speak of how he takes care of us and how he loves us and provides for us and deliver us. Just think about the fact that he is so great, that he's sovereign. There's none above him. That is why we worship him just because he is. And that's how we establish that relationship. And that's what gives us access to the power of God. And there's a saying that I kind of like that says, you don't tell God how big your problems are. You tell your problems how big your God is. And I'm reminded of one of my favorite stories in the Bible of David and Goliath because, you know, Goliath laughed because this little boy is coming to him like, where are you going? And he was saying how he was going to destroy him. He was going to kill him. He was going to feed him to the fowls of the air. And David was just this young lad. And he was not afraid at all. He said, oh, no, you're not. I serve God and I come to you in the name of the Lord and I'm going to kill you and I'm going to cut your head off and I'm going to feed you to the fowls of the air. And he was not afraid. And I love that. And that stays with me because when we face the Goliaths, in our lives, those problems that seem insurmountable, when it looks like there's no way that we can win, we can go back to the fact that our God is so great and he's so mighty and he's so awesome. And that makes us automatically victorious. So the next time that you start to stress and you start to worry, just think about God and, and just let your mind meditate on everything that he's done. This week's subject is Our Mighty God, and it comes from the 66th Psalm. Now, the book of Psalms is divided into five divisions, and the 66th Psalm, it falls in the second division, as well as last week's lesson. Both of these Psalms are in the second division of the book of Psalms. Now, the second division is about praise and worship. And these are Psalms are songs of worship and praise. So that's what's in this second division. And that's what this Psalm is about. And it opens up and it says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Now, when you speak of joyful, we should find joy in the fact that God is God. We should be happy about what the Lord has done for us and who he is. So it says, make a joyful noise, noise, say something, do something that indicates that I'm just not going to sit and I'm not going to think it. I am going to express it. Noise means it's audible. Somebody can hear it. And then it says all ye lands. When you say all ye lands, that is letting us know that God is sovereign. There is no one excluded. Everybody, all of creation is designed to worship the Lord because he is the God of the universe. So right there, we see that we're going to worship the Lord. And then it also says to honor him and to make his praise glorious. Make it big. Make it give it everything that you've got. Make it a big production out of, you know, we, we talk about some people, how they're so dramatic. You know, I always tease my daughter, you know, how teenagers can be. Everything is just such a big deal. Well, God is a big deal and we need to make his praise glorious and, and make the, make heaven hear us rejoice and, and allow God to feel it. You know, there's, when we sing praise and worship songs, we say that we want our praise to reach the throne of God and so that God can honor so that our praise and our worship will make God happy. And it will also show people or demonstrate just how God, how great God is. And then it speaks of being terrible. When we say terrible, we're not expressing terrible in the modern sense of something that's really bad. Terrible is and this lesson is something that is awesome, something that you're just in awe of you. You going, wow, it's that wow factor. So when you say that God is terrible, it's that wow factor. And, and I just want you to think for a moment to a time where God just blew your mind. He did something or something happened and it was just outside of your realm of imagination. And you know that that was God. And it's just 
awesome. And that's what we're talking about, how he is and how God does things that, you know, um, sometimes they say that while you're trying to figure it out, God's already worked it out. And sometimes we rack our brains. That's me. I am a planner. I am a thinker. And I like to find solutions. Sometimes I can't find a solution. I have been racking my brain about something and God just comes in, works it out just like that. And all I can do is worship him because I know that he did it for me. And then our text says that all will worship God. Not maybe, not possibly, but everybody is going to have to come to a point of worshiping God. And I love this part where it says, come and see, you know, sometimes when you say something and you talk about it, it's like, yeah, 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 whatever. But when you know that, you know, that, you know, you're not scared. You can say, come, come see, let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me show you what God can do. And then they reference the parting of the Red Sea and how God delivered the children of Israel out of the hands of the Egyptians. And this is the entire process, not just limited to the parting of the Red Sea, but just the 10 plagues, how God sent those plagues. And you have to really think of this in the context of what it was. That Egyptian empire was no joke. They were great and they were powerful. There was no way that those poor Israelite slaves were supposed to escape from the hand of the Egyptians. That was not supposed to happen by any natural means. That was not supposed to happen. But see, we're talking about our mighty God. And God said, let my people go. And when God said, let my people go, it was time for those people to go. And so that's when he allowed those 10 plagues to come and he allowed them to go and make it to that Red Sea. And he opened, listen to this, opened up the Red Sea and they walked across on dry land. And I was, I was talking to some friends. We were talking about that and I'm looking like, I, I you know, I believe God and I trust God, but it would have been hard to get me to cross that Red Sea, looking at the water standing up. I would have been looking like, okay, Lord, um, I, I know you did this, but, but you have to think about, it. and that's what we talk about being terrible. Sometimes God can move so powerfully until it will scare you. You'll kind of just stand back. And, and I've had to overcome that. There have been times when God has opened up doors for me and given me opportunities. He's opened doors that I was even scared to walk through. I went, whoa, this is way more than I even asked you for. He will do exceedingly and above all that you can ask or think that's how mighty our God is. And if you can just have the faith to walk and live in that place of understanding how mighty our God is. And then I love this part. It says he holds our souls and he will not suffer thy foot to be moved. How great is that? God is holding my soul and he will not suffer my foot to be moved. I am standing on a solid foundation. I have my balance. I'm, I'm standing there. You know, sometimes you might be walking in. If the ground is on level, level, you step on the crack and you feel like you're going to go down or something like that. No, God has me. My foot is not going to be moved. I am walking on a sure path because he's taking care of me and he's guarding my soul. And that is something that you have to just know. And then when you know it, you walk in it so that when you're walking through turmoil, turmoil and difficult situations, you know that you're going to make it even when it looks like it's you're not going to make it. And people are telling you things and you're reading things and everything is going against what you're saying. You know who God is and you understand what God can do for you. And if you're able to allow the Lord to just hold your soul, see, that's it right there. The devil wants your soul, but the devil can't have your soul because God is holding your soul. And all you got to do is hold on to the hand of almighty God. And then here we go again. It says, come here. First, he said, come and see. Now he said, come in here because I'm going to declare 
the works of the Lord. I'm going to declare God's greatness. I'm going to declare God's glory. And that means we're speaking it. And I say all the time, watch what you say. What should be coming out of your mouth should be glory and honor and praises for the Lord. And then it says that God will not move. He won't hear you in iniquity. Iniqu iniquity is sin. When you have sins in your life, things that you're doing that God does not approve of, it can be things, you know, you might not see me, little stuff I slip and do that I should not be doing. When we allow that to happen, God will not hear us. But then he goes on after that and he talks about, yes, God did hear me. If you submit to the will of God. Now, when we talk about how mighty God is, OK, our mighty God and all of the things that he can do. But guess what? Here's something that God can do for you. God can keep you saved. God can help you live right. Not only can he give you a house, give you a car, give you a job, give you money. He can give you salvation and keep you saved. And so when we do that, then God will hear us. And that's how our psalmist closes out this 66 Psalm. Yes, Lord, I thank you because you heard me, because you delivered me. You didn't turn a deaf ear when I was talking to you. You accepted my praise. You accepted my worship. You answered my prayer. And that is what everybody's goal is. And that is how we can tap into the mighty power of our God.